Hey guys, this is me Akash Shai for Vipin Sharma Biology Tutorials. Today I'm going to talk about your NCRT back question discussions. This is your part one. So there are total 10 questions and I'll be discussing in two parts, part one and part two, five in each, five in each. So these questions are a pretty much sort of a summary of your whole chapter so you can summarize it. Further, it will be helpful for your concept building and your board preparations as well. So the first question is your name the three important components of biodiversity. The answer is pretty straightforward and we have already discussed this answer in your concept of biodiversity. So let me give a review here. So the components are basically genetic diversity, species and ecosystem diversity. So genetic diversity is like the variety existing between the genes. I am a different uh, individual. You are a different individual. I have different sets of genes and you have different set of genes. So the variety which is existing between these two of the same species is called genetic diversity followed by species level of diversity wherein there's diversity existing between various species. For example, cat, dog, insects, butterflies, homo sapiens, everyone. These are of different, these are different species. Okay, so the diversity, the variety existing between these is called species level diversity. And the third one is ecosystem level of diversity. That means the diversity existing between various ecosystems like your desert ecosystem has separate flora and fauna. It covers a large area, right? So there's a different ecosystem, temperate grassland, tropical grasslands and your rainforest. Everything is a different ecosystem and the variety existing between ecosystem is termed as ecosystem diversity. So this is a point of like little bit review on what you have studied in this concept of biodiversity video. Now the second question is how do ecologists estimate the total number of species present in the world? So this is related to your, to your species, species richness uh, stuff. So the first it's a bit of explanative uh, so listen to it properly. So the first point is statistical comparison. So there's a region. It has 10 types of species, 12 types of species, different types of species, right? So one uh, area has different like 10 second area is 12 so you have can statistically compare these regions so the first point is statistical comparison so this way they estimate the total number of species out there and the second point says getting the ratio species a is 10 species b is 12 species c is 15 in this area there's a ratio existing between species a b and c you can estimate the richness right so in this in different area you can here species a is present 9 species b is present 12 species c is present only 8 so the ratio between first area and second second area is different so getting the ratios of different groups of plants and animals and calculate the total species richness present on earth so these are the two components by which ecologists estimate the total number of species present in the world. So you can have a reference for this answer in the concept of biodiversity video. Now the third question is give the three hypotheses explaining why tropics show greater level of species richness. Pretty straightforward question. Let me give a review just. So the first point is receive more solar radiations. The amount of solar radiations received by this tropics is more than temperate or polar regions. More the solar radiations a area receives, more the productivity of that region is, more the biomass content the area has. So this tropic receives more solar energy, that means more productivity is there, right? The second point is less seasonal variation. Pretty much constant seasons are experienced in this tropical regions. For example, temperate and polar, these are like getting extremes of uh, your uh, temperature and rainfall conditions. So there, the seasonal variation is quite high in temperate and polar regions. But more biodiversity means le uh, more diversity is a result of less seasonal variations. Now the third one is remained undisturbed. So there are, were many patterns of like changes the earth has suffered like the glaciers, the ice age in the past. But these tropical areas relatively remained undisturbed during that region, that time. So relatively undisturbed. So these are the three main hypotheses which were there which suggest that why tropics have more biodiversity, more species richness in there. Now you can get this in detail in the video of patterns of biodiversity. Now the fourth question, what is the significance of slope of regression of species area 
relationship we talked about z value if you remember so the small areas regardless of the taxonomic group are less steep means less biodiversity is out there in smaller region but when you increase the area the slope is much larger the z value is much larger in case of large areas smaller in case of your uh, small areas so this is less steep this is much more steeper then there's a species richness uh, relationship and this is given by the slope and this is the significance of the slope more steep the slope is larger area larger biodiversity less steep the slope your smaller area less biodiversity so you can get in detail this question in patterns of biodiversity so the fifth question is uh, what are the major causes of species loss again a simple straightforward direct question just have a review of it habitat loss and fragmentation there's a area divided due to man's activity in part one part two part three part four due to fragmentation and this led to habitat loss the simple straight, pretty straightforward over exploitation then again we needed 12 units we consumed 15 units this three unit was a result of our greeds that leads to over exploitation and over exploitation leads to species losses now alien species in vision there's an ecosystem good one healthy one stable but an external species came into picture attacked the indigenous species and the indigenous species who are hampered led to alien species invasions followed by co-extinction one species a was dependent on species b if species b undergo a loss species a will also undergo a loss so it's co-extinction one got extinct the other will automatically go extinct so you can get to know more about it in the biodiversity losses video so that's kind of it guys and i hope this video helped you keep watching vipin sharma biology tutorials for more videos like that thank you